Con, con amar. That Sanskrit, the black sign of death, is on this house. Is on this house. That's enough for tonight. How do you feel? Tired. Margaret, please give me a hand. Your husband must rest now. A little under the weather, aren't you? Take my advice and stop these seances. You get excited, your strength goes, and that isn't something you can afford to squander so lightly. I didn't ask you to preach, Charles. They're my only interest in life now. By means of these seances, I can cross the border. The border of the spirit world to which I belong. You'll never get better if you go on like that. Better. I'll never get better. All I can hope for is a quick death. No. John. John, are you mad? It's useless. The poison does its work too quickly for it to be effective now. You must drink this antidote. Drink it. Drink it. that time. Don't you realize you must get well? You must. It isn't only your life, it's your theory, your cure. That wonderful inspiration that'll save the lives of millions of poor cripples. Yes. I mustn't forget the efforts that you've made. It's a heavy responsibility for a doctor to give lethal poison to a wealthy patient. These two poisons will stimulate your limbs back to life. I know it. Thank you. Give me faith. And if you change your mind, child, 
It would be simple to put me away. A drop more poison, too little antidote, and that is natural. You've a declaration signed by me, which limits you to carrying out my preparation. All right, John, that's enough. You must try to get some rest. I'm off to the hospital. See you tonight. Come here, Catherine. Get me a glass of gin. Over there, it's in the bookshelf. really shouldn't. The doctor will be angry. Damn the doctor! long time in the garden. I'm sorry, darling. But don't be cross. It was such a lovely day. Don't say that. It makes me feel even more of a cripple. John. Oh. Why do you talk like that? Because it's true. I was watching you down there with Charles. You were so remote, so far away from me, tied to this wheelchair. And you seemed so happy. Uh, I was happy because Charles was telling me you were getting better. Slowly, but surely. My friend Charles. The suave Dr. Livingstone. He is the exemplary, faithful friend. If you're jealous of him, why don't you send him away? He isn't the only doctor in Scotland. I know. 
that he's the only one who has dared to practice my cure on me. Then what are we arguing about? Doesn't my being near you, my loving you help, or mean anything to you at all? I'm sorry. My apologies. You may go, Kathy. gave you the revolver. Was it Catherine? No. It's been hidden in here for years, among the books. May I help, ma'am? Thank you. I'll manage alone. living this part anymore. I can't, I can't, I can't go and be the devoted nurse and the loving wife. You've got to put an end to it, Charles. I can't even bear to touch him. I hate him. Help me. Help me. I beg you to put an end to it, Charles. It's impossible. You know that as well as I do. I thought you loved me. I thought you would do anything in the world for me. Anything, yes. Not that. But don't you see he's getting better? No, he's not. A cure is a stimulant. It gives him occasional shots of vitality, but it doesn't alter the nature of his disease. Believe me, darling, we won't have to wait much longer. You're lying. You said yourself a cripple can go on living for years and years. You are lying, aren't you? 
I can't stand it, I tell you. I can't stand it, Charles. I can't. You can just abandon it all and leave it. You can leave him, you can leave me, you can do anything you like. I'll never leave you. Then free me. Charles, if you don't do it, I'm going to. Do you hear? No. No, Margaret. Charles. I will, I swear it. We heard it at a restaurant in Copenhagen. It was the first time I met you, remember? So long ago. Nearly 13 years. The waiter insisted on presenting us with a bottle of Dutch gin. I was a real man then. A doctor, building a reputation, yes. And you, a beautiful, penniless young thing, without a care in the world. How happy we were then. As happy as two children on holiday. Don't move, darling, or I'll cut you. Pour me some gin. You know you shouldn't. It brings back memories. You have some too. Good evening, Canon Owens. You look the picture of health. Good evening, Mrs. Hitchcock. You too, my friend, are looking very well. I'm happy to say. Yes. I owe it all to my dear devoted wife and our good Dr. Livingstone to the Dutch gin and to the memories evoked by a Viennese waltz. Then, since you are in such good spirits, Dr. Hitchcock, perhaps you will have patience enough to listen to me. Oh, no, thank you. I never drink. What I have to say is not uh, altogether pleasant. Out with it, Canon Owens. Have you come to tell me that the people are still gossiping about the devilish rites being conducted in the house of evil, crippled Dr. Hitchcock? Please, Dr. Hitchcock, you shouldn't treat this matter so lightly. What I mean to say is the townspeople are saying that your experiments are very close to that measure. And you must remember that not very long ago they were witch hunting. And they 
So you also believe that I'm actually in league with the devil, is that right, Canon Owens? The devil is more real a person than our modern world would have it, Dr. Hitchcock. Come, can't you forget these experiments? I appeal to you as uh, a man of science. Surely you should be the first one to despise superstition. It is no superstition, Canon, I assure you. It is all basically scientific. Well, then, I warn you, Dr. Hitchcock, you are playing with forces which are best left alone. I entreat you, confine yourself to your scientific studies like these here. Don't touch that! That file holds curare, one of the deadliest poisons. If even the slightest scratch on your hand were to be touched by it, you might have ended your days in a wheelchair like me. Usually, curare kills. But in small doses, it paralyzes. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know. Just a minute, Charles. The Queen moves to H7. Checkmate. Exactly. <laughs> if it weren't for the doctor with the injection and the hypodermic I'd ask for my revenge. I'm afraid, Dr. Hitchcock, it's getting late and I think we ought to go now, or else we'll have all the people in the town saying that the chief constable is neglecting his duties and that criminal activity is increasing in the county, and we wouldn't want that now, would we? <laughs> Don't forget that. No, 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 no fear of that. I'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow? <laughs> Who knows if I'll see tomorrow? When I was in Africa, a witch doctor said to me, the day will surely come when the bright sun will no longer shine over the forest. Your medicine uh, seems to put you in a bad mood. Why don't you give it up? don't believe in medicine myself. As far as I'm concerned, I think it's an awful lot of nonsense. Not to me. I think that scientists should believe in their power to heal even cripples. Perhaps you're right. Good night. Good night, <sighs> Dr. Hitchcock.
Be quick. Be quick. Give me the antidote. What's the matter, Charles? Give me the antidote, please. Please, Charles. Please. I'm suffering. It's been an hour since I gave the injection. It should be over now. If you are waiting for Dr. Hitchcock, he's not coming. Oh, it's my fault. I'm sorry. He told me to say he was dining in his room tonight. for more than an hour. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Oh, Charles, please, not now. It's all right now. We've nothing more to fear. It's all over. <laughs> I can't stand it. I wish he'd Margaret, go away. Margaret, what are you thinking of? You mustn't lose control. We knew it would be difficult, but remember, we have each other. Oh, stop him, please. Make him stop. Make him stop.
What's that? Madam apologizes. She'll be down. Who is once. she? She's not too well, sir. It's strange. I wouldn't have thought her so sensitive. The master's death has upset her, and if I may take the liberty, sir, I don't think you should leave the house now. Madam needs your care. Please, Dr. Livingstone, stay with her. She's taking it hard. Yes, I'll stay. Good morning, Canon Owens. Good morning, Dr. Fisher. <sighs> the last time I saw our poor friend, that is to say, the night before his demise, he seemed strangely excited. Before our usual chess game, he insisted on dictating his last testament. Dowbridge, November 4th, 1910. I, John Hitchcock, sound of mind, am dictating this my last will and testament to my solicitor, Mr. Albert Fisher, the Fisher, Markley and McNabb of 10 High Street, Dowbridge. Item one, I bequeath my house with all it contains and the land on which it stands to my wife, Margaret Hitchcock, Nate Whiteman, as a token of gratitude for her affectionate assistance on condition that she keep in her employment my governess, Catherine Wood, to the end of her days. Item two, two thirds of the contents of my safe in bonds, shares, currency and jewels, which is to say all that I have been able to save during my existence should be given to the home for orphan children, <coughs> directed by Canon Owens in the recognition of the several instances in which his words as a friend and clergyman have brought balm to my troubled soul. The remaining third of my belongings shall become the property of my wife, who shall use them in any way she thinks fit. Item three. All the books and documents pertaining to the studies I have conducted during my lifetime will be denoted to the Institute of Psychic Research in London. That's all. Now, Mrs. Hitchcock, if you would kindly proceed to open the safe in my presence. key is in the drawer of that desk, Mr. Fisher. You'll find it yourself by opening it. Mm. 
There is no key here, Mrs. Hitchcock. Strange. Catherine, do you know where the key might be? No, ma'am. But I remember the master always kept it in that drawer. There's no hurry, Mrs. Hitchcock. You can take your time. And if you think it necessary, Canon Owens and I can have the safe seal. Oh, good heavens. I wouldn't dream of it. In that case, Mrs. Hitchcock, will you kindly inform me as soon as you find the key? Should it really be lost, we shall have to apply to the magistrates for authority to have the safe forced. Nothing. And yet it must be. It's bound to be somewhere. What is it, Catherine? There's something I've got to tell you, ma'am. The master sometimes kept the key to the safe on his person. I saw him myself put the key in his vest pocket a few days before he died. But in that case, it must still be in his coat. Oh, yes, ma'am. But it's the coat he was buried in. Well, you see, John has the last laugh. <laughs> There's 150,000 pounds in shares and jewels in that awful safe of John's. 60% oh, of which is to go into the greedy hands of dear, Christian-minded, charitable Canon Owens. <laughs> it's so funny when you think what we've risked together for the benefit of those poor orphans. <laughs> and dear Canon Owens. <laughs> oh, it's so terrible. Don't you think it's funny? Stop it, Margaret. <laughs> Margaret! Margaret! <laughs> oh, the key's buried with him, buried with him, buried... We can't force the safe, they'd find out. Of course not. All we need is the key. Charles, I want that key. Thank you. 
injections, they hasten decay. Here's the key. That's all that matters. Let's open it. Come on. Bell! Darling, you must stop her. Don't let her come in. Go on. Excuse me, I was wondering... Oh. Oh. oh! Did you hurt yourself, ma'am? How terrible. What happened? Uh, no, it's nothing. What do you want? Is Dr. Livingstone upstairs? Yes. Why? They're asking for him at the hospital. It's very urgent. All right, I'll tell him. Oh. Can I help you, ma'am? It's all right, Catherine. Let me help you. No. Charles, they want you at the hospital. What's happened? There's nothing there. I tell you, there's nothing there. No money, no... Just papers and documents. <laughs> Margaret, stop it! Margaret! Margaret! Don't shout! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it. Calm yourself! Stop it! Come on. Get up. Be all right. We'll find it sooner or later. Sit down. into the lake. I must go.
at you. Behind the drapes. It was John. John. He was alive. I fired four or five times, but but he kept on coming. It was horrible. I'm going to see where it is. There must be an explanation. No, Charles. No, please. I must no. go. I won't be long. I'm frightened, Charles. I'm frightened.
must you sneak up on me like that? Excuse me, ma'am. Canon Owens to see you. He is waiting for you downstairs. What's he want? I don't know. He didn't tell me. Good morning, Mrs. Hitchcock. Good morning. Please sit down. Uh, oh, excuse me. Uh, we missed you in church today, Mrs. Hitchcock. Surely you haven't forgotten. What? The memorial service for your husband, uh, you know, we live in a small community, and... Uh, Will you come to the point, Canon Owens? Uh, well, Mrs. Hitchcock, Dr. Livingston's uh, presence in this house was necessary during your husband's life, in view of the state of his health. But now you will understand. A young, widowed lady, alone, in her deceased husband's house, a man, even though he is a trusted friend of the family, you mean the town would have it that Dr. Livingstone is my lover? Oh, dear me, Mrs. Hitchcock. The thought never entered my mind. But I thought it my duty to warn you that gossip... Let them gossip, Canon Owens. I have other things on my mind. I only meant well, Mrs. Hitchcock. No doubt you did. Good day. Good day. Have you gone crazy? What? First you forget to attend a service in your husband's memory. Then the canon comes and you put his back up. You practically insult him. Charles, you seem to forget that it was he who insulted me by suggesting you were my lover. The fact is it's the truth, my dear. And we don't want people to find out the truth, do we? I'm sorry, Charles, but what could I do? You should have thought about it first. We're playing a dangerous game, Margaret. You know as well as I do what one more stupid move like that will bring us. Darling, please don't turn against me now. I'm not turning against you. If I would do that, I'd have done it a long time ago, long before you dragged me down to this. I dragged you. It was you who killed him. Don't you ever say that again. Never. Charles, you're hurting me. Stop it. You wanted him dead. You pushed me into this. Forget it. My nerves must be going too. It's John coming back like this to these walls. He's much more between us now than he ever was alive. He's always here. I always feel him just over my shoulder. Sometimes I turn to try to catch him face to face. And he's not there. No one is. Hmm. Oh, well. We're in this together. That's all that matters. I'm going to go upstairs and try to get some sleep. Remember, we must be very careful now. We're being watched. You, uh, you'd better go up and visit your husband's grave this afternoon. Take him some flowers and be sure that someone sees you do it. Just as you say, Charles. I'm only saying it for our own good.
You really should try and eat something, ma'am. It's not good for you to go on day after day without having any food. I don't want it. Shall I stay up and wait till Dr. Livingston comes, ma'am? Do you want me to wait for Dr. Livingston, ma'am? Oh. Don't you hear it? Don't you hear it? Hear yeah, what, ma'am? You know perfectly well what. It's coming from upstairs. I can't hear anything, ma'am. You can. You're lying to me. Oh. Ma'am, <laughs> what's the matter? Ma'am, ma'am. This was the master's favorite snuff box. I found it in Dr. Livingstone's room. Yes, I remember now. The safe was already open when Catherine called. I left him alone. No, it's impossible. But the snuff box must have been in the safe. Oh, how stupid I've been. <laughs> I know what you are looking for, Margaret. But it's not here. It's not here. John. It's not here, it's hidden under the coffin. That's 
the hiding place. Under the coffin, under the stone slab, it's waiting for you. It's, it's there. All you've ever wanted, jewelry, money, Margaret, wealth more than you've ever dreamed of, all that you've ever longed for, Margaret, all, all that you've ever longed for.
Why are you spying on me like that? Somebody got to it before you did. Who is doing these tricks? Who is it? Who is it? <laughs> That's not hard to understand. Who lives in this house besides you and me? It's very clear, isn't it? No. There's no one else, is there? Margaret, I'm leaving here. I... why? Because I finally realized that everything we hoped for is being gradually destroyed. Even if we found that money and could get away from here, it would be too late. We would only go on destroying each other. I'm sorry, but... No, what's done cannot be undone. You said so yourself not very long ago. That's right. But I can get out before more evil is done before we completely destroy each other. Why these silly qualms of conscience all of a sudden? I feel like a man waking from a dream. And I realize now, for the very first time, what we've done. Charles, please don't go away. I'll do what I have to do, Margaret. Charles, everything I've done has been to have you with me forever. That's all I've ever wanted out of life. Don't leave me alone, Charles. We are both alone now, Margaret. Perhaps forever. Don't you understand that? Being together would be like living in a nightmare. But I love you, Charles. I can't live without you. It's too late for love and feeling. You once loved your husband, didn't you? Well, that's all over and done with now. But you'll forget me, just like you've forgotten the other. But that's not true. I love you. No, Charles. <laughs> I didn't believe her. I didn't believe my own eyes. But Margaret, I didn't know about this. Yes. You don't think that I... What should I think? What should I think, Charles? It's all quite clear now, ever since the very first thing when I left you alone with the same... Oh, are you no, crazy? Charles. I'm not a thief. Oh, no, yes, you are a thief. You what? deceive me. What are you, you are talking liar, about? Charles. I've got to know what you're you talking are. about. <laughs> I swear I didn't take them. No, Margaret! No, no, leave me alone. Stop it! Crazy! I swear I didn't take them. I didn't know they were in my bag. <laughs> so now you'll be convinced it's best we split up.
Margaret, you're trembling. expecting me. You should be accustomed to my materializing by now. But this time it's really me, Margaret. Alive and kicking. Just feel how strong my grip is. But I won't kill you. No. It would be too easy, my dear, for you to escape your punishment that way. When you were in the tomb, you cut yourself when you opened the jewel case, didn't you? Well, I smeared the hasp with poison. Curare. It paralyzes, you know. And now you'll be tied to that wheelchair like I was, and I'll be far away enjoying my wealth, which you and that poor idiot Charles were looking for so desperately. <laughs> I had it all the time. Oh, I forgot to tell you, you were wrong about Charles. He didn't take the jewels. Catherine put them in his bag. <laughs> he really loved you. Charles. I planned it all. It was Catherine who loaded the revolver with blank cartridges when you shot at my ghost. But when you so kindly fainted, she shot a few bullets into the wall and you went crazy with fear. You know, it all started when I realized I was really getting better. I wanted to bring you the good news. And I found you in the arms of Charles on the floor. You decided to get rid of me. But I replaced the curare with a liquid which produced apparent death. Putting another corpse in my coffin. Causing you to look feverishly for the estate. Persecuting you incessantly night and day. Appearing to you as a psychic materialization was all very simple, wasn't it, Catherine? Have you prepared everything for our departure, Catherine? Yes, sir. Perfect. Thank you for all you've done for me. You've been a great help. Thank you. Go now. Margaret, one last favor, darling. Your fingerprints on the revolver, but thank you. Now you'll be accused of her death, too. <laughs> Poor Catherine. When she called the police for me, she didn't realize she was asking them to come here to investigate, not Charles's death, but her own. <laughs> Amusing, isn't it? Soon, my darling, you will be completely paralyzed. They've arrived. I shall have to leave you, my dear, before I expected. I apologize. I apologize profoundly. 
Ah. My faithful Dutch friend, Jin. I see that you're cultivating all my habits. You poured yourself a glass. Your good health. Or rather, your ill health. And to our memories of Copenhagen. <laughs> secret passage in this room. We would have met <laughs> frequently. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, Dr. Hitchcock, the devil is a very real person. 